Archaeologists are racing against time to save artifacts from what's being described as the most significant find of Roman ruins in the past half century. They're located in eastern France, and the discovery is being hailed as a mini Pompeii, the Roman town near Naples in Italy that was destroyed in 79 AD by the volcano Mount Vesuvius. As part of our ongoing coverage of Culture at Risk, special correspondent Malcolm Brabant reports. 2,000 years ago, this corner of what is now eastern France was on the fringes of the Roman Empire. The only constants over two millennia are the moon and the river Rhone with its transport links which drew the Romans here. In the village of saint colomb right next to the Rhone, archaeologist Catherine Dupinet is working to extract rusting iron armour belonging to what's believed to have been a retired Roman officer. It's really difficult because it's located in the remains of a shop. It's surrounded by a layer of soil, tile and brick that was burned and is really hard. This is very fragile and it's complicated to get it out. This has been a very productive day for archaeologist Benjamin Clement, who's leading this dig. So here yeah, we just found uh, all the pieces of uh, huge armor of the first century AD. Here we have a little part of a belt. You know, and this kind of decoration comes from a little belt uh, on the front of the armor. Here we have all the parts of the armor, all the little pieces who come from it. We just find 10 minutes ago a little uh, weapon, uh, a little sword. I just show you, and if you come to see here, we have all the, protect the protection for the shoulder. The site has been described as perhaps the most important discovery of Roman remains in the past 50 years. Some of the artifacts apparently match the beauty of those found in Pompeii, especially the mosaic floors of houses belonging to the Roman upper classes. But the most precious ones are no longer visible. They were removed by the archaeologists before they went public about the site because, as Culture Ministry official Marie-Agnès Guédon Bunuel explains, they were worried about theft. There has been an increase in clandestine treasure hunting in France these last few years, with objects being reclaimed from archaeological sites, which we are not happy about at all. The Minister of Culture is trying to fight against the practice because the removal of these artifacts from their archaeological setting prevents us from dating the site, and they are being actively marketed outside of France. But some of the more visually mundane antiquities, like clay pots, remain. This cluster was found in the Roman equivalent of a delicatessen. Mosaics is really interesting because it's, um, it's part of art, you know, it's like a statue. But uh, for the understanding of uh, the way of living of Roman people, and mostly for the, the middle class and lower class population, to find this, uh, this structure is, is more interesting because it's a, it's a chance uh, to understand how they live and how they do for cooking, eating. That these treasures were found at all is due to a French law that requires developers to excavate areas where the authorities are confident that antiquities may be buried just beneath the surface. The town of Vienne and its surroundings are prime historical real estate. One of the best preserved Roman temples is situated in the heart of Vienne. And in the summer months, its citizens, many of them no doubt descendants of the Romans, dance and indulge in the age-old habit of worshipping Bacchus, the Roman god of wine and drink. Like Pompeii, the enclave at saint Colomb had its own disasters, not a volcano, but a couple of infernos. Unlike Pompeii, the inhabitants here managed to escape, but as Benjamin Clement explains, fire has similar preservative qualities to volcanic ash. The comparison with Pompeii comes from the fact we have two big fires uh, which destroy all, all the neighbors. The first one in the beginning of the 2nd century AD and the second one in the middle of the 3rd century AD. And this huge fire preserve, froze all the structure, all the furniture, uh, the artifacts in the houses, in the shop, in the public space, and it's exactly the same uh, things than in uh, Pompeii. Now this site may be as significant as Pompeii, but you're not going to be able to come and see it anytime soon. Within months it's going to be covered in concrete and turned into apartment buildings and a car park. But Roman antiquities specialist Elsa Diaz from Portugal is saddened that soon this treasure will disappear from view.
it's one time in your life opportunity to dig a place like this. You have to be passionate to be an archaeologist. When you see the work we do, uh, you have to, uh, to be passionate. <laughs> it's really physical and we dig uh, when it rains, when it pours. Uh, <laughs> And this site, it's, uh, it's an exceptional site because in France there's nothing like this. Personally, I would preserve everything, but we know that in the world that we live in, it's not possible. So people have to live somewhere. Someone else is going to live here <laughs> after the Romans. That's history. Yeah. At the end of the working day, as his colleagues dust down the shoulder armour, Benjamin Clément brings out the short sword that may have killed British tribesmen as the Emperor Claudius expanded the Roman Empire. It's always a way, it's again saying when you, are, when you make uh, archaeological excavation before building construction because you have to deal with other priority and not a scientific or archaeological priority. And it's really hard, but it's a part of our work. And it's a part really interesting of our work. The armour and all the other artefacts recovered from this dig will probably be displayed in a museum nearby, enriching the cultural value of Vienne. Among its more unusual treasures, a pyramid that some claim was prepared as a mausoleum for Pontius Pilate, who ordered the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. But, according to the team here, that is fake ancient news, a real Roman myth. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Malcolm Brabant in Vienne.